I actually really, I really like this one. This is not a one liner. This is, so you gotta get, you gotta get kind of like into the, into oh the my flow goodness. of it. Okay, you ready? Just like, just go with it. Just breathe. It's gonna be a good one. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Um. <laughs> Delta Airlines. We're not gonna do it. We're not gonna do it. <clears throat> Delta Airlines is infusing its cabins with lavender and chamomile scent called Calm. The week asked its readers to come up with a better name to match, quote, the ambiance of the packed economy cabin. The ambiance. The ambiance. These were the top suggestions. From Serena Meyer, Eau de Humanity. Eau <laughs> de Humanity? I always say Eau, but it's O. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Eau de <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, the Humanity. <laughs> I've already messed it up. It's fine. Okay. Wade Etheridge suggests Giorgio's arm on me. <laughs> Austin King, Chanel number five inches of legroom. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> From Cynthia Pucali, claustrophobique. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think might be my favorite film. I can although, see although this was another good one. Carrie Berkowitz suggests missed connection. <laughs> That's a good one too. And finally from Julia flag, the 99 per cent. Per cent. Ah, <laughs> that one's a head scratch. I, 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 it's, it's better read than, than said. <laughs> Okay. Claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> oh, the humanity. That's 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 a really good one. That's a really good All one. All right. My I turn? like the Chanel number five inches of leg room though. That was <laughs> Chanel number five inches of leg room. <laughs> so true. Oof. All right. Sir. <laughs> okay, you get that. Okay. <laughs> Out comes the water. Sorry, Cassie, I don't have the goblet today or the vat. All right. Why do Imperial stormtroopers make the best pilots? Oh God, why? They never hit anything. <laughs> yep. I like that one. I, I do that. like that one. I was thinking it was going to be something to do with like shots or whatever. Like, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't place it. Definitely. <laughs> A dad joke. For I'm sure. kind of regretting winning that rock paper scissors. <laughs> so, <laughs> so mean. You shut up. You shut up. <laughs> you shut up. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll take a groaner. I'll take I'll a groaner any day of the week, twice on Tuesdays. Thank you, Blake, for your amazing talent. Good one to rock out to. It like is there a are good times one. when I'm just like, I'm, let's sit here and listen to this for three minutes. This whole like, album is amazing. It Check really it out to Nomad. Yeah. Nomad by Blake Symphony. Plug in hard. Yeah. It's on Spotify. I think it's on SoundCloud. It's definitely on Spotify. Like follow him, subscribe to him, listen also. Check out, dude, check out Art Bay. Art Bay? Art Bay. Oh yeah, that's his new. It's yeah, and uh Nomad World Citizen merchandise. The reels. It is gorge. I'm gonna buy a pair of those shorts in every color. The tiger shorts. Oh. Hey, I've I've seen some looks on there where I'm like, could I pull that off? If I can yes. pull that off, oh my god, with go your legs? It. Yes, sir. Please pull that off. <laughs> Sorry, not to get weird about it, people, but like my husband's got insanely gorgeous legs, and yes, oh, you, you would look spectacular in those I, shorts. I I'm was sorry. a rockette for a minute. Not actually sorry. Nobody's buying that. Not even for a second. I don't, not even a little bit. Not even kind not of. Even a tiny bit. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better at this. You finally are. Although I notice you still keep that side of the mixer towards you. So I don't have access to I don't to trust it. you with no, it. No, you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. I I set it off earlier without even meaning to. I was like, I'm just trying to help. And then the cable I was moving hit a button and the little fairy twinkle sound went off. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. That was actually me hitting it. Oh, you did that? On accident. Oh. Yeah. Well, no. Basically. Ugh. 
What are you drinking? What am I drinking? Oh, we should talk about who we are for. We should say who we are. Oh, fine. For the people who are tuning in for the first time. <laughs> do you if you're not tuning in know for, who I am? Do you, do you know who I am? No. How do you not know who I am? Excuse me. I'm like world famous in my mind. I'm the world famous in my mind, Jim Manning. I'm the world famous in his mind, Adelaide Braddock. She is world famous in my mind. Yeah, that's for sure. You're adorable. We are the co-founders of Trippy. Thank you for joining us on episode five of our podcast. We are thrilled to have you here. We're very excited Yay. to be presenting what we're presenting today because this has been kind of a long time coming. We're, uh, We've been know. thinking about how to, how to package this up and, Ugh, and so much talk to talk about. about. Oh and, my good night. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about one of our very favorite places to go. Yes. On, on vacation, on holiday, <gasps> on holiday, like, if you will. Like loved it so much. We were like, can we buy a house out here? And then we realized we couldn't buy a house, but that was beside the point. We almost yeah. just made it work. It was fine. Um, I mean, I think we still can. I'd live work. in Flagstaff in a hot minute. Oh my oh God. My yes. Night. Well, anyway. So yeah. Yeah. So now that we, we have the asking. intros out of the way, Mr. No. Mr. James Manning is going to present what he is drinking today. I'm, uh, this is a good, this is good. This would be Love City beer. It is the Eraser Hood, which is an absolutely lovely IPA. They are brewed over in the Eraser Hood of Philadelphia, which is like a half mile walk from us. What, but why is it called that? Because it's in the Eraser Hood. What, why is the Eraser Hood called the Eraser Hood? Ah, <laughs> the Eraser Hood is called the Eraser Hood because it was the inspiration behind Eraser Head. Wait, which I thought was, David Lynch was from there. He lived in the area. Oh. And like that whole industrial look. Ah. At least this is what I was reading. I should actually ask my sister about this. She she might know all about it, or she might His not. His sister, know for the record, has some of the world's most amazing tattoos, and one of them is a tattoo for all of you Eraserhead fans. She has a tattoo of a Eraserhead on her shin that I believe has actually won awards. It is yeah. so beautiful and it's gorgeous. It's extremely detailed. Very like whoever the art. I don't yeah. know the artist. I'll extremely have her send well me done. the name of of the artist so we can put them up here. But um, it was it was so well done. <laughs> That we went to when when Jim and I were living in Barcelona, Rachel came to visit and uh, we decided she wanted to go to Rome. She was like, I have to go to Rome. We were like, well, we've never been to Rome. Let's go to Rome. When in Rome. Heck yeah. And so we went to Rome and I mean, people were. Oh, they loved her tattoos. They were so floored by her artwork. And there was a woman, we were at the Coliseum and Rachel and I were walking down this set of stairs at the Coliseum and this woman comes up and says, excuse me, Misa, may I have a, a picture with your, uh, with your tattoo? And she's like, uh, with my tattoo. And the woman's like, yeah. And, and, and Rachel just kind of looks at me and I was like, I'll take a picture of a woman with your tattoo. And I was like, can I take one with my camera too? And she's like, sure. And I was like, <laughs> but it's like on her shin. So it's not like, it's not, it's not like a convenient, convenient place yeah. to like, so Rachel had to sit up on the step and this woman got right up next to her leg. Like it was, it was, <laughs> like it, it was, was something so to behold. It was cute. It, it was, was very really cute. cute. It was one of those moments. I was like, you're cherishing the crap out of this, aren't you? And she's like, oh, I never want to leave. <laughs> yeah. And, and we're, we're just going to overlook that, that awful stereotypical Italian accent that you did too. The woman was not Italian. I don't know what accent that was. I was trying to do just kind of a generic, <laughs> Gen- hopefully generic no one would, European. no one would call me out on it kind of accent, but thank I you would, for that. Why would I call you? <clears throat> that is kind of what she sounded like though. It was like a weird, weirdly sort of Eastern European quasi French. I'm American and I can't tell where the hell you're from kind of situation. So yeah. that's what I went with. So anyway, so tell us about your, tell us about your beer. Tell us about Love City. So Love City, uh, Love Love City Love- it's actually celebrating their five, fifth anniversary. Yay! Uh, they are located in the Eraser Hood. They are actually their the Eraser Hood of Philadelphia. For those of you who don't right. know what the heck the Eraser Hood is, but it's uh it's up north of um, north of Market. It's like centered around Ridge and Eleventh, Twelfth area. Yes, thereabouts. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, it's this really cool like location. It's a little, yeah, just south of Spring Garden. It's a little tucked away in there, but it's a really nice 
uh, really nice atmosphere, just very like industrial warehouse, like everything around there is industrial warehouse, but sure. it's so that, but they're, they make that aesthetic work and they have a lot of really delicious beers. They do some seasonal stuff too. Um, just celebrating their fifth anniversary. If I didn't say that already, you did. Okay, good. <laughs> Apparently I wanted to, the I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, I, I, I happen to, they, they happen to have some favorites of mine. So I was like, eh, I'll rep you guys for the podcast. What am I doing here? What's that? What is that all about? I'm even hitting the you, mic. Move I mean, your like, cable. Uh, you got your hand under your cable too. You got, oh, like, no, that's no, no, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stop doing that. What, this? No, move, oh God. Ah, it's bugging me. Ah, stop. Ah. What, I'm not even, <laughs> no, get your hand over the cable. Ah, thank you. Whew. Holy cow. Whew. Oh, that was a moment. Yeah, no. So delicious. <laughs> Recommend if you're in Philly, give it a try. Someone else out there better see this and agree with me. That was really frustrating. <laughs> mm. You're. I got some bird. hangups. I got some hangups. It's you, fine. Uh, you have. <laughs> All right. Well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That, that that out of the way. What are you drinking, love? This is my drink of choice. This is tequila. If you believe that. Um, Wait. What? You didn't do your thing. What. Oh no! Well, okay. Now Jim ruined what I was gonna do. He just, you know, didn't do your thing. All right, cut it, cut it. Too long. No, I'm already at six seconds. Ah. I will give credit where it's due. I think we're good. I got it right at ten seconds. Who does that song? Uh, that is the Champs. Okay. Or at least that's who did that version, but that's what that says. I think I think Probably a few of them. There are a few of them, but no, it's the champs. Often covered, often imitated, never duplicated. Never. Oh God, often imitated, never, never duplicated. No, never. Yeah, it's often imitated, never duplicated. That's saying, isn't it? No, it's not. Darn it. Why do you do this to me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it is never duplicated. I'm going to shut up now. I've never heard it that way. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, okay. Tequila. So, tequila. Yeah, I'm drinking tequila. So, yes, I, or at least I have tequila in a glass. I have not been drinking it yet, but. Oh, it's you haven't so been drinking it? No, no, no. I've just been having it sit here so that I can not be hammered. <laughs> because let me, let's be honest. I'm a bit of a lightweight. I am a cheap date. Um, you are. I am. So it's also part of the reason I, I you know, I fun love fact, you. fun fact, I played rugby um all four years of college. Uh go bulldogs. Uh and if you can pick which bulldogs <laughs> let <laughs> me know. Because we're talking about the four corners, or we're starting to talk about the four corners, because let me tell you, we have a lot to talk about. We got a lot of cover people. So, you know, this is kind of the four corners 101. Mm -hmm. um, but because we're talking about the four corners, I wanted to bring out uh, some of the tequilas that I got while we were there. So this was this was one that we got there. I Oh, there we go. So I, I actually cannot find this one east of the Mississippi. So this one is uh, very special to me and I have all of this left because I am one of those people who's like, I must sip it and enjoy it and love it and cherish it forever is my precious. <laughs> See, I'm, 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 I, I'm, I must sip it and enjoy it tonight. Uh. Yeah, right. <laughs> this, I love this one. And this one, it's so funny because I bought this. Oh, I'm, I don't I'm, even know if I've had any of that. Nope. And nor shall you because no, it's my I, tequila. Hey, look, I, I bought I, it Lord for knows. me. No, it's fine. I didn't really. You can totally have some. Um, but okay. I got it. This bottle, I bought it at a gas station on the way out of Winslow, Arizona. Yes. <laughs> for like $18. And it is some of the best freaking tequila I've ever had oh, in my entire life. What is it? Life. Hacienda de Chihuahua. Hacienda de Chihuahua. Yeah, it's it's by a company called Sotol, Sotol, uh, Sotol. which I have looked up. Sotol makes, uh, they are based out of Mexico. They make some really amazing tequilas. Um, I have looked into getting some shipped directly here and it's not cheap to do that, but it's fine. It's fine. No, um, I'm sure <clears throat> shipping tequila is very expensive. Right. Well, I mean, from Mexico, but anyway, so now I just have to go to Mexico and get my tequila. It's fine. Um, but, and we will, you know what, we're going to go to Mexico and that is my big priority. Jim knows this about me. When I travel, I tend to have like one objective when I go places and 
Uh, and I'm left filling the rest. And he is. And that's why that's why we invented Trippy was because we were like, well, for the people <laughs> who don't like to plan and for the people who plan all the time and can't get the non-planners to work with them, this is going to help buddy. do that, right? <laughs> so Come that on, was buddy. the whole thing. Come on, buddy. So, okay, but this is clearly not that tequila. This is much darker. Um, this tequila is called El Padrino de Mi Tierra. This is... Uh, Really lovely. Uh, you can get this at any Total Wine. And now, liquor. is that the stuff you found in, in the Total this Wine is, in Phoenix? This is the one that I got at the Total Wine in Phoenix. And Dave at Total Wine in Phoenix, which I hope someday he hears this podcast and hears that he got a shout out because that man was amazing. Um, I asked him, I was really looking for a sipping tequila, something that would drink kind of like a whiskey. Mm-hmm. And he introduced me to this. So this is the Extra Añejo. And this is... Um, I want to put it between like seventy and eighty dollars a bottle, so it's not <laughs> it's not cheap, but um, but it's good. It's so good. It's so it's good. So, and actually, I think I've I actually it, have had the privilege. I think of I've gotten it. As, yeah, I think I've gotten it as cheap as sixty before, maybe around there. But um, I mean, but you get like the bottle number on the side, and mm-hmm. you get like this beautiful. Real I mean, look at this. Official. It's a really nice bottle. I mean, this is this is engraved in here. This isn't just like plastered on. Etched. And, etched that's what i meant but yeah i mean so anyway um i really like it and uh one thing i learned about tequila is i always drink it neat when you put water in it it really messes it up so no water no ice just pour it in a glass and go uh maybe a squish of lime if you a squish of lime a squish of lime if you feel that like a scientific term Mm -hmm. a squish have you never heard that before i (sighs) no can i tell you it's like it's uh, it's like brown sugar it really matches the flavor. Really matches the, the color in here. But it's like brown sugar and vanilla are like the two main flavors. And it actually kind of has almost like a, like a rum when you have a really high quality rum. Mm-hmm. Like it really t- where you can taste the sugar mm-hmm. cane. That's kind of you almost get that same flavor composition with this guy. It's lovely. I feel really like you nice. can do that. You can say that of a lot of liquors though. Yes, and that's because of how they're aged. Mm-hmm. So liquors that are aged in oak barrels, and particularly when they're aged for an extended period of time, tend to pick up those flavors as a result of the oak that they're aged in. And this is no different. This is doing the same. The, the vanilla components, yeah. wines, same thing. If you're tasting like a like a Chardonnay that has kind of like a buttery vanilla-y kind mm-hmm. of sensation to it, it's probably been French oaked. Or it's either been oak. It's either been aged in oak barrels or oak chips have been added to the wine while it was aging in steel right. barrels. So, yeah, but this is... It sounds like cheating to me, but... <laughs> it's I, not, but I get you. It's, 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 just, just, different, it's just, just a way yeah, of adding a flavor. It's I like have a no recipe. idea how any of this stuff is It's like is a done. recipe. I've, like, I've heard it a billion times, too, and like been on distillery tours, been on winery tours. We actually have been on a winery tour. We've been on and, a few. Yeah, brewery tours, and yep. I just like nothing sticks. <laughs> like I water goes in beer comes out I'm happy <laughs> I, 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 I'm i probably drinking too much when I'm on these tours to the news to the news oh I forgot where this there you go come on you can oh, find uh, it you got this <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> wait where that nicely done good save yay <laughs> Total pros. All right. So first first news story today, we're going to be talking about something that I found. I don't even know how I came across this. Um, I This, like, honestly, I want to know how you came across this because, like, this was never, this has not come across my travel news feed. That's, that's all sure. I did. I just searched travel news. <laughs> so I was like, oh, you this sounds interesting. News. Yeah. And this is, maybe, is this a sponsored link? What are you looking up? Nope. It just came That's up. That's a work computer, Adelaide. Listen, that I own. <laughs> Stop it. The name of my segment I called Packing the Self-Love because um, I am a personally sex positive person. And I'm one of those people who's just like, I, yeah. it's, a, it's a basic human function. Like, It's a thing that we all need in order to survive. (laughs) For those who are not asexual, but yes, you were here because No, 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 no. I mean, even people who are asexual, I mean, it's like sex, sex comes in many forms. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be the intimate, naked sex that like we all talk about. There's a reason I'm having even this preface. So y'all just bear with me. Uh, But, but it's the idea of like just being 
intimate with another person in whatever mm. way that presents itself to you and that person or people, however, however you choose. I, I personally, um, just have, I, it's like, whatever. Are you, into like, uh, how deep are we going here? I don't know. I'm not going that deep. It's fine. <laughs> wow. You just made me say that. I'm so mad at you. Okay. You, you, you we're introduced fine. the topic. We're fine. We're fine. Um, this is what we get for being raised in a puritanical society. Okay. Mm. So summer is a great season to travel romantically. Like we know that, right? Like with others or on your own, it's fine. You know, whatever. Like maybe you want to take some toys with you when you travel. And I will at least get Oh God! We, we, we call them accessories. I will get the ball rolling, <laughs> so to speak, by admitting that I have traveled with accessories. It's fine. You have. I am a grown ass. Oh, that's adult. right. I am a grown ass woman. I have needs. It's fine. Like you do. Or I have also like bought some while I have traveled and brought them back. So you know, like it's fine. It's like a whole thing. So okay. Can you do this is the question that I am here to answer for you today. So this was the news story that I found was talking about, like, can you travel with adult toys? And the answer is yes, mostly. So I, I just heard your mom turn off the podcast. I know. <laughs> it's like, nope. And stop. Sorry, mom and dad. Um, <laughs> so. Good Lord. What does this have to do with the four corners? Not a goddamn thing. So just bear with me. Although, uh, you know, if you wanted to have a little fun in the four corners, I mean, you can always include. Just stop. Just stop. You have to stop. (laughs) So this is hard (laughs) enough as it is. Oh my God. Okay. So anyway, so talking. Um, The, okay. So TSA, if you go to the TSA website, so um, there is actually a website that TSA has provided um, called, can I bring it? And they cover all kinds of things. So this was it's this, called "Can I Bring It?" That's the "Can awesome. I Bring It?" And I okay. loved it because this—that's one of the reasons I really love the story. Was because um, just even having that, re- like knowing mm. that that resource existed, it's a searchable site, so you can type in whatever oh, you want, nice. and it'll just bring up whatever it is. But there, but it's also listed, and there's uh, links to all the different things that they mentioned, so you can check more information because some of these are like yes with caveat right or no Mm. with caveat in some instances but most of them are most of them are like straightforward yes no yes no or checked only carry on only right lithium ion batteries for example so if you have it is and if you have a toy that is rechargeable the likelihood is is it's rechargeable with a lithium ion battery which means it has to Mm. go in your carry on which means you're Mm -hmm. taking it through security which means how do you get it through security in a way that's not potentially embarrassing for you? I don't know, but this is reminding me of Fight Club for some reason. I don't know why. And I'm just going to leave that there. So anyway, <laughs> the whole the whole reason uh, this is important is because uh, even though I'm struggling to talk about it now, I am actually one of those people who, like, if my vibrator got caught in security for some reason, I it would not bother me. Like, really and truly. It's, okay. it's just one of those things. I'm like, you know what? Again, grown ass woman here. Huzzah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, so the idea of, but I recognize that like for a lot of people that the idea of getting caught with your personal toys is not maybe ideal. (laughs) Could present like some sort of dramatic response. Um, I have suggestions for how to avoid this. So, um, and not, they're not just from me, although these are things that I have done as well. So I can't speak with authority on whether or not this works. Um, But uh, uh, removing the batteries, if they are removable, is a very, very good idea because then you avoid the possibility of like buttons getting triggered or things getting turned on accidentally. Um, If something goes off in security and is vibrating, they are going to stop you regardless. That's the part where it's reminding me of Fight Club. Oh, there you go. Okay, so. (laughs) I actually had a taxi driver one time uh, drop me off and my suitcase was vibrating. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I was genuinely concerned because I was like, what do I have in my suitcase? And he was smug as all get out. Like he was like smirking at me. And I'm like, girl, I know you think you know what this was. I don't know. I genuinely, and I was, I wasn't trying to play cool. I was like, what the hell is that? And I finally opened my, I finally got my, my suitcase out of the thing. And like, I opened it and it was my, I had forgotten that I had bought a toothbrush 
while I was traveling that was a travel vibrating toothbrush that took batteries. And like, I had just completely forgotten about it because it wasn't in my normal repertoire of things that I pack. So I was just like, okay, it's a toothbrush. I, again, I don't care, but this dude thought I was trying to be cool or something. Um, so, but anyway, but take, but I hadn't taken the batteries out and that was why. So take the batteries out. Right. That will avoid things. Also, Smart. it's a good, you know, it's a good idea to take batteries out of anything that you can and and put the batteries in your bags. It's it just preserves the safety. batteries. It Doesn't preserves it? the batteries, but it's does a safety it? precaution. It does, and it's a safety precaution, just kind of in general. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable tr- putting batteries in my checked luggage. I'm just not. Like, if you're unfamiliar with why batteries are a problem, batteries, it, lithium ion batteries in particular, tend to be um, unstable in certain situations. Like, if they get too hot. Um, if they get embarrassed, if they stop, <laughs> no, it's not directed at I'm you. I'm gonna punch you. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah. So and then they can explode. And you, the last thing you want on a pressurized aircraft is an explosion that will potentially cause can confirm uh-huh, problems and has historically. So this is a thing that you want to be conscientious of. So for me, I just take all my batteries and I put them in my bags. Period, end of discussion, then I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so there's that. Um, Taking smaller toys. (laughs) He's opening another beer. Highly inconspicuous. Yeah, so suave. And that was my mic that you muted. Thank you. Uh, No, I'm on two. No, but you muted me. Never mind. Okay, so taking smaller toys is, uh, is another good suggestion. So a lot of these companies that make uh, some of these toys do make travel versions of these toys. So you can actually take a smaller one um, or there are just smaller toys that are available. Um, But in the event that your luggage has to be searched for any reason, Mm -hmm. it's less likely that your toy is going to be the focus of attention when that happens, if that happens, when that happens in any case. So um, there's that. Plus, this is the bonus to me is it takes up a lot less space in your suitcase. Um, which is always my objective. Okay. Keep everything in a drawstring dust bag, if you can, or wrapped in a cloth, because if for no other reason, it's sanitary, like anything that's in your suitcase, like your shoes, your uh, literally anything that you've been traveling with, that's been touching God only knows what, like you don't want your personal. What about like a Ziploc? That works too. Okay. That's fine. And it's and it's great because it's clear. So if they mm. just need to like pick it up and look at it and put it back, that's right. that's awesome. Um I honestly the would dust do bag that method to, works for me. I, I honestly <laughs> would do the, the the clear one just for the look on TSA's face when they hold it up for a second and realize what's going so on. So you say that. You say that as a white man who probably doesn't who like passes as a white man, like for people who are gender queer or trans mm-hmm. or you know may present differently mm-hmm. you know if, who are marginalized in any capacity this presents an opportunity for ridicule sure. and right and we Comes know tsa i'm sorry but we've all had some experience or another if you traveled through security at an airport you've either heard the horror stories or experienced it personally like People are people and some people are professionals and some people sure Mm. as hell ain't. And that's not an opportunity that you want to be presenting someone you don't know, especially if you're already at risk for like being called out for stuff. And I, and there's another point about that that I'll make in a minute. So yeah, so definitely like I would be comfortable with them being like, Oh my God. But like, you know, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a biatch when it comes to stuff like that. Like call me (laughs) out. Why don't you? I'm sorry. Do you not want me to have an orgasm? Like, yeah, I'd get, get a little sassy. On. I'd get a little sassy about it. Yeah, for sure. But again, privilege does its thing. Um, okay, so there's that. Um, but also because people might be handling your luggage. So if you have it in your checked luggage for any reason and someone has to like insecurity has to like go through it, or if you're going with your carry-on and someone has to look through it, you don't want their grubby ass hands touching your stuff. Like you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like even with gloves on, you don't know what else they've been touching. Like all that stuff gets in there. So no. Oh, so true. Okay. Um, couple last quick points. Um, re- please remember lube is liquid. <laughs> so yeah. follow the liquids guidelines when it comes to lubes. Don't carry more than you're allowed in any particular rate. Hundred milliliters slash three point four ounces, same diff. Um 
nothing larger than that. Um, and not a bad idea to put those maybe in a Ziploc container because, oh Lord, have mercy, like liquids sometimes have a tendency to open up in transit. And if that happens, you don't want that all over your stuff in no, your suitcase. No, no, so no, no, no. definitely. Especially if you're on business travel. For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, double check specific items with the country you're traveling in and around. So um, this is kind of the last big point that I want to make here. So um, bondage gear, if you're traveling with bondage gear, not something I actually have experience with, I'm sorry to say, um, but you want to make sure that what you're traveling with is allowed. So I don't know, like riding crops, for example, can you put that in your carry-on? Probably not. Let's stick that in the checked mm. luggage. Um, handcuffs might look a little weird um, in your carry-on. So yeah, like you want to keep the things that make you look like you might be up to something nefarious as opposed to something consensual in your checked luggage. Um, keep it out of your carry-ons. Um, they're less likely to care about it in there. Um, ironically, most countries have allowances for traveling with weapons, but there are places where it's illegal to possess sex toys. Mm. Yeah. So here's your list, courtesy of the LGBT Sentinel. Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, uh, Mauritius, the Maldives, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. Surprised me, actually. Yeah, thought, Thailand's a little surprising. Yeah. Uh, Vietnam, Bali, and Alabama. I'm not commenting. I can't even. I got that list and I was like, what? <laughs> Like, yes, I went into the red. I don't care. Like. Terrible. Just the worst. I will clip all day, every day over that. Alabama. Alabama. Congratulations, Alabama. You made the list. So there you go. Um, so last point I'll make on that was kind of what we were talking about. Um, there are still, as of as of today, as of what I was reading, 68 countries that do criminalize same-sex uh, relationships. So, um, if you do present as non-gender specific or gender queer or transsexual mm -hmm. or what have you, um, there, there, you clearly do not want to be drawing additional attention to yourself in any way that is unnecessary. Right. So like there's yeah. already, there's already that to contend with. Um, so this could create additional problems for you as a traveler. I did, I did not come up with that point on my own. That was a point that was made in the articles uh, that I was reading. And I thought that was very interesting because I of course had not considered mm. that uh, on the basis of my experience traveling and who I am. So that, that was something I thought of as being, ha, huh, okay. Like, right. is it worth it to risk it? Um, what I did find interesting, I will say is there's a lot of, there's a lot of resources excuse me, that you can find, and we'll have some of these posted around um, what is allowed in certain countries. So there are halal sex shops in, okay. uh, I think I was reading about this in Saudi, um, where you can't buy sex toys, but you can buy like romantic night enhancements. So like Romantic night candles, oils, um. like just make mood setting equipment effectively. Nothing. Very white albums. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> just wondering, like, oh, nope. <laughs> it's, I just, that just, yep, surprises that, me not at all that Barry White gets it going for you. Yes, that's great. I, like, come on. The it, thing is, I know that Barry White gets it going because Barry White, not because like the the traditional like. You would let that man do horrible things to you, I feel. I, I mean, I'm not saying I would, but I'm not saying I wouldn't. Uh, no, more. It's, but he's famous for, you know, that deep, deep baritone and the, mm -hmm. the, the, the deep, ballads deep bar and the, mm -hmm. the love songs mm -hmm. and everything like that. Yep. You can make it about whatever you want. I'm not, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm secure. In, I'm secure in who I am. Oh, I know you are. That's why I don't mind. That's it's why I don't good. mind these conversations it's all good. at all. Like, you know, I'm, in, I'm secure in who you are too. I'm here for it. I, I, I can't say that I've ever found Barry White attractive, but I can't say I haven't either. So yeah, I'll go, the, I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. That man just, would, that man would say your name in that voice and you'd be like, okay, probably you'd be probably butter. you'd be, you'd be white melted butter. Oh, come on now. This is a family show. Is it? That's how you get families, right? Hey. Ooh. Ayo. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah, no, that was. You're a, welcome. That everyone. was. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, she was like, she's like, are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna look this over, like to make sure that we can put it in? And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, and it Again, was, it was far grown more grown ass woman. It was far more entertaining watching you attempt to get through the the thing that you put on here very purposefully. But I'm glad you. I, I'm actually glad you did it. I, I think that was a hey. Cheers to you. Thank that's, you. That's not that's not an easy story to to get out there with. But at the same time, it's like you got some good information there. Like the the what can you bring? What Things can I, I bring? Didn't know. Things yeah, I didn't know. like stuff like that. And I mean, hell, people, you know, couples or even yeah. singletons, they all they all travel. Um, lots of people like sex and lots of people will travel for sex to spark things, you know, re-spark their relationships or spark new relationships or just go out and have anonymous random sex with foreigners Again, and, and, and all that fun stuff. Sex positive. You do you. All right. <clears throat> Your turn. My article is a, a, a little less um, sexy, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, it's go wild and skip the crowds. at These seven spectacular parks. National Geographic, although that could get you going. It's like, it's one of those... Dude, national parks? Heck yeah. <sighs> Dude, they're so <clears throat> gorgeous. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, so it's a... So, uh, especially after things started opening up during the pandemic, uh, National Geographic noted that, you know, parks were starting to really start suffering from overcrowding issues, particularly some of the most popular parks. Uh, and you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like some parks even had to close their gates, for example. Oh yeah. Yeah. Arches national park in Utah, uh, had to close its gates before nine in the morning one time. Cause it was just full like no more. Oh wow. I know. Can you even imagine? And Arches, it's a park. Arches is pretty famous for like a lot of like Insta posts and such, right? Like there's, oh, there's a few, uh, <clears throat> stone features out there that I know I've seen. Sure. And people like wait in line for like hours to go do this. Yeah, no, and it's, it's famous enough that they, you know, they were like uh, too many people, and of course it's all people trying to get out and everything when you're talking about pandemic and yeah. So, so they instituted um, recreation.gov. They created a website for reservations and everything uh, that can be kind of tedious and had been prone to crashing from sheer volume. Wow. Uh, so it's, it, it, you know, it's kind of hard to get those tickets, find those tickets and, and actually secure them. And then you have to plan your dates around that. And so you're essentially left to, to, to plan your trip around the dates that you were able to secure. So mm-hmm. why not skip the lines, uh, and find yourselves some, some interesting national parks that are gorgeous, but you know, don't have that sorts of crowds. And let me tell you, they have some really great suggestions, uh, on this, on this national geographic site, such as glacier Bay national mm-hmm. park up in Alaska. Oh, this is a really fascinating one. Okay. Um, so it's in the, it's in the Alaska panhandle. It's, um, if you know, and uh, Adelaide, you you might, but uh, it's not. I say not terribly far from Juneau, but it's. I've never been to Juneau. But you know the pan, the Panhandle, like where that little piece of BC mm-hmm. kind of juts out, and mm-hmm. you got Yukon Territory, British Columbia for those of you who don't. Yes, know British Columbia that. for those who who are not as geography nerdy as I am, and yeah, so it's right up there. It's tucked in this corner. And it's really fascinating. It's fairly close to Juneau, but you actually still have to get a flight or a boat from Juneau in order to get to Glacier Bay National Park. Mm. And like it's it's so remote that it uh, Ala- but Alaska runs Alaskan Airlines runs a daily flight between Juneau and Gustavus, which is the town that's like ten minutes from Glacier Bay National Park. Okay. But yeah, so uh, lots of... Can you of, stay in Gustavus? You can stay in Gustavus. Okay. You can actually stay... They have uh, the Glacier Bay Lodge in Glacier Bay Park. Nice. Uh, so you can stay there as well. Um, or you can also, of course, camp if you are if you would like to, ca- to to go camping up there. Although if you go to Alaska in the summertime, like, I'm not kidding, the mosquito is the is the state bird. I, I yeah, I, I, I've got to experience this if for no other reason than I'm from Florida and I'm like, I'm so no, skeptical. Your skepticism is, so skeptical. Is, fair, is fair and warranted. I will tell you with authority, the mosquitoes in Alaska outrank 
outrank people, the mosquitoes in both Florida and Texas. I've been to all of these. I've spent time in all of these places and I'm telling you uh, with authority. Yeah. You're saying a lot there. I'm, I'm still skeptical, but okay. Okay. The skeeter eaters in Alaska, which are insects that eat mosquitoes, but look like mosquitoes, right? So they're slightly larger are the size of my fist. (laughs) Now I'm getting one punch man vibes telling you they're, they're not to be trifled with. So do they know, will that. know they will know that you were skeptical and they will come find you. They mm-hmm. smell your skepticism. Spear you right through the head. I had so many mosquito bites one summer that I thought I had gotten the chicken pox again. Ye. It was not great. Ye. I was miserable. I was miserable. That's not lots of calamine lotion there. My grandma and grandpa were like, yeah, just lay there. <laughs> do nothing. I was like, okay. I just watched, I just watched uh, Nickelodeon for like three days straight. It sick. sounds like a good way to get over some mosquito bites. <gasps> awful. Absolutely awful. Sit there and watch DuckTales or something. Anyway. Yeah. So Glacier Bay. So Glacier Bay. So that's one of the recommendations. Uh, it's also very popular. I know we just sold it really hard. <laughs> I, right. Like I'm the one. I'm Alaska's saying, I'm, gorgeous. I'm, I'm I'm the I'm the timid traveler. I'm the one who's like, eh, world's dangerous, and you're like mosquitoes the size of jets and at least as potent. And like, um, okay, well, go out there and have fun, kids. We're going to skip from Glacier Bay to Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. What? Yeah, Montrose, Colorado. So, yeah, it's obviously less remote than is it Glacier Bay. It's pretty remote. Oh, there are some other. There, there are a couple other ones. Like there are a couple in the continental United States where I'm like, how in the f- do you get there? I I don't even understand. Um, but yeah, yeah, Black Canyon of the Gunnison in Colorado. Okay. Uh, so yes, it's on the western slope of the Rockies. So it's it's over on the other side, close to the Utah border. What a great drive, though. Right. Oh, Jesus. I love driving through the Rockies. Oh, it's so oh, beautiful, man. And you can like you, you know you can get a, you can I seventy across the Rockies, yes. and it's like you 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 don't have to worry about. And if you can get a rental with a some, with a with a manual transmission. Oh. No, oh. I'm serious though. Oh, it, like, it. No, it makes no. all the difference. I'm with you. I was that was a that was an <sighs> oh of yes. 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 Although hybrid FTW. But anyway, sorry, I'm interrupting your story. No, it's okay. Um it's it's going it's flying right by, so we're all good. Um No, so it's on the western slopes of uh of the Rockies, four and a half hours southwest of uh of Denver. <sighs> um you can like Camping gear, uh, you have to camp. There's no par- There's no uh, hotels in the park itself. Wait, what about facilities? Um, so that's, there, always, that's always my only concern when I go camping is like, okay, where can I pee? I mean, you can pee in the bush. I don't enjoy that. I don't blame you. And I um, like, like, let's be real. I appreciate a good squatter <laughs> every once in a while, but I'm not generally a fan <laughs> well i the, the good news is all the uh, <laughs> links are going to appear in the in the section here so you can actually scope out these parks yourselves okay. and see where all the facilities and are i'm not are, i'm but, not i'm not just play acting dumb i genuinely have not read any of what jim prepared no, here it's today all, it's so all I'm good like, it's, uh, oh, wow. I, spent, I spent so much time on it i was like oh please <laughs> stop uh, um no and, and it's a but it's a really fascinating like you know there are some there are some non-primitive spots that you can camp in. And of course, a lot of these you can do RVs with like Black Canyon and the Gunnison. You're not taking an RV on a jet flight to... to no, uh, but to you can rent Fraser RVs Bay, when you but, land. Well, no, that's what I'm saying is you can do like, you ain't going to land in Juneau and try and take an RV on a freaking ferry up to glacier <sighs> bay that's, that's just true. a bad call that's true but if you're if you're flying into denver or colorado springs to your point yeah you grab yourself an rv you drive out to mm-hmm. black canyon of the gunnison national park okay boom there you go now you got an rv and you don't have to worry about facilities and things of that sort okay but they do have like non like front country camping sites and you know camping what's, sites with what's facilities front country mean well there's front country and back country so oh. front country is simply the opposite of back country and I've back never country heard that term before yeah it's it's something that you'll something that you're going to come across when you come like when you go search for any of these parks is is front country versus back country and it's like the front country is exactly what it sounds like it's the it's the the 
or no, I'm sorry. The back country is exactly what it sounds like where it's like you, you out in the woods, mm -hmm. it's you and the bears and the coyotes and, and all that and take, take precaution and the front country is like you still got the bears and the coyotes but there are lots more people around it's mm -hmm. closer to the like the roadways and other facilities and everything so they do have like improved camping spaces gotcha. as well as the really primitive stuff like way out in the wilds okay so yeah that's <clears throat> that but that's front country versus back country okay. it's like i i'm shocked i didn't know that but okay yeah, I, I mean, it's not like we've, we've been together 13 years and we've camped exactly zero times. So. Uh, lies. We have camped at least once. No. We can, yeah. No. Yes. When? Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Okay, fair. That was 13 years ago. Okay, but um, we have done it since then. No, we haven't. We camped in the living room. <laughs> That was really fun. <laughs> that was a pandemic necessity right we've there. Got, got a, <laughs> we got, set up a tent. tent and everything and I'm we bought a tent. We had never used it. We were like, uh, I don't know. Let's go camping in the living room. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and and we watched uh, we watched Studio Ghibli movies. And it was nice. Yes. It was very nice. That was I a great time. I, I enjoyed we that. Do, we should do that again sometime. We should, we should absolutely do that again sometime. But I, I'll bring I, the toys. I am itching, I am, <laughs> you don't even have to fly them anywhere. It'll be nice. Um, now I'm blushing. There no, we I'm are. Not. There we are. <laughs> yeah. So, so you got the, uh, you got the front country camping, you got the back country camping. Um, and, and yeah, it sounds like a really cool place. There's also hotel rooms and everything in Mon Montrose, oh. which is very close to, uh, the park itself. Okay. So yeah, it's, that's it. it. It was the recommended jumping off point according to this article. Um, another one was Ch Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Historic Trail. Sorry, I just had to look up Montrose and the pictures that came up. Oh man, yeah, Gunnison looks, looks insanely cool. Okay, yeah. all right, all yeah. right. Sorry. So back to no, back all to good. you were saying. All good. The uh, Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Historic Trail. That sounds like it's right here. Uh, yeah, it, it really is. It is. Uh, it like talk about not remote. Okay. Um. So this is a trail. This runs from like the tidewater. Hampton Roads area of Virginia, which I love, all the way up to like like out the James River and other tributaries and everything. Okay. Other tributaries that that um like basically think of the Chesapeake watershed and some of the rivers that flow into there. So the James River, the Potomac mm -hmm. River, mm -hmm. the Susquehanna River, mm -hmm. um, and it's a very water based trail. So you can actually do lots of canoeing. They have NOAA interpretive buoys um, okay. that you can look at. What does that mean? Oh God, that's a great question. Like I didn't, I, I, I scratched the surface. I didn't dig deep, but it's NOAA, NOAA meaning the NOAA, NOAA is the national ocean graphic and atmospheric administration national oceanic and atmospheric administration that's what you said no i said oceanographic whatever <laughs> i heard oceanic anybody from NOAA want to come on board let's let's chat this would be great good stuff um we're fun to talk to so fun or with <laughs> <laughs> either or at in the general direction of um so yeah, they have the uh, so they have these uh, interpretive buoys that you can find um, paddling all around these areas. But you still didn't describe what an interpretive buoy is. I still am not sure what an interpretive buoy is. It's I, I look. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up right now. No, Let's take late. a look. No, now I'm looking it up. No interpretive buoys. What Chesapeake? Yeah. So the first thing that comes up is Chesapeake Bay Interpretive Buoy System Home. Uh huh. And then it talks about a nuclear power plant. What? <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, these are solar powered. <gasps> oh, it looks really, really cool. I'm oh, I know right what now. these are. I've seen these before. Okay. So these are solar powered buoys that give you like real time updates on like ocean currents, water temperatures, atmospheric temperatures, like all that's happening, wind speed, wind direction. Yeah. These are mm -hmm. really, really cool. Like they manage all kinds of data. Like all kinds of data. I didn't realize that yeah. they were called interpretive buoys. So these are the ones that are, but they're there in place of uh, blazes on land trails. I found, I found a concise, okay, here we go. Thank you, Wikipedia. Chesapeake Bay Interpretive Buoy System, CBIBS. <laughs> that was fun to say. CBIBS. Uh, is a network of observational buoys that are that are deployed throughout the Chesapeake Bay to observe the estuary's changing conditions and to serve as waypoints along the Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Historic Trail. 
Uh, they are maintained by NOAA. These smart buoys observe and record meteorological oceano oceanographic, mm -hmm. you used the right word, uh, and water quality data, which can be obtained in real time by using mobile apps or by visiting buoybay.noaa.gov. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So very cool there. Oh, that yeah. is cool. That is uh, right. That's baller. Um, yeah, I'm here for it. And of course, you can find camping facilities and such along the trails. And I mean, this you thing, had me at canoes. This I mean, is <laughs> freaking huge. Well, we were we were we actually stayed not far from like in the area. Oh, at the Laughing King. Yeah, the Laughing King you know, on the eastern shore of oh, Virginia. Heck yeah. But yeah, so it's like Hampton Roads. Um, so you can stay at Hampton Roads. You can enter from Hampton Roads. You can enter from freaking Richmond. Hampton um, Roads is great. Yeah, I really, Roads, I really love that area. I was really impressed. Like the Hampton Roads is cool. I really loved the the Eastern Shore when Agreed. we stayed there. Agreed. Um, but yeah, so it goes all the way up Chesapeake Bay, up the Potomac to like as far as DC. Um, then Baltimore, of course, mm -hmm. on at the top of Chesapeake Bay, up the Susquehanna up to um all the way up to like cooperstown new york so yeah up past harrisburg wow way up into yeah it's huge it's okay. this gigantic trail that you can take throughout the mid-atlantic so find there accommodations have to be people who like do this trail there probably are in its entirety are you one of those people yeah please reach Tell out us about to us it. it's uh but it's it's one of those where i would totally podcast at trippy.com yeah i'd totally like to hit some of that uh hit some of that trail action there Heck it's yes. uh Sounds lovely. Yeah. Like, and the mid Atlantic is one of those regions I think is, is, is fairly underrated in this country. I love this point that you made on here. You can find plenty of hotels and side quests as you visit. <laughs> That's so well stated. I Spectacular. like the mid Atlantic is not just home to really cool ass trails like that, but no, there's a so ton much. of history and great seafood and great seafood Fantastic and great surf, surf culture. Yeah. K coast. K shout, shout out. out dude shout k coast out. is amazing k coast down in uh uh cape charles cape charles virginia go see spencer and his team down there uh if you're into surfing at all For like go sure. to cape charles and check that out that whole area is just fantastic like spencer's yeah. one of those people i just i love people like him because he's he's got it figured out <laughs> very very like, cool dude very there's cool something dude. about I there's something about like people like that who are just like, this is who I am. This is what I want to be when I grow up and I'm already here. And he's like, you know, I yeah. don't know. he's like 30. I don't even, I don't know how old he is. He's, he's, he's amazing. I, Very his whole, like loved run, loved meeting him. He, that loved was, he was meeting in, him. like an in, in, inspirational dude. No lie. Yeah. Local celebrity. Spencer, if you're listening. <laughs> When you listen, check it out. Like Props. go, go check out his stuff. We love what you're Big doing. Ups. And thank you for that. All right. All right. So anyway. Okay. Um, you want to show continue yes. to Voyager, Voyager National Park? Yes. Yes. Let's do it. All right. Uh, so this is another one where um, it's a yep, Voyager ahead. is up in uh, Minnesota. Um, it's this is another one of those that, that was like crazy remote. And I mean, just right there in the borderlands between Minnesota and um, uh, Minnesota and Ontario and it's it's like you have to take like it's just, it's not even there's not even really much ferry service voyage voyage looks like it I i'm sure know. that's not how it's actually pronounced that's just a french i don't we should maybe see how it's actually pronounced sorry sorry i'm i'm getting all pretentious with the pronunciation yeah so voyagers? I, you what voyagers v voyagers v o y a g e u r s if you know how to spell if you know how to pronounce that do let us know podcast at trippy.com send us a voice file though because <laughs> anyway i can't read ipa oh um, lord Anyhow, uh, yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, campsites and hotels are literally only accessible by boat. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's open year-round, though, even up there, way up in north Minnesota, because those those folks are crazy when it comes to to winter. Having been there a few times, like, they, yeah. they salivate over winter like most northerners. They claim to hate it. They summer. claim to hate it. I have never met a single person from the upper Midwest who has ever claimed the, to hate it. The only time it's so funny. And my, my really good friend, Anne lives in Minnesota and she, she will complain about winter, but only in so far as like it, if it like, 
extends a little further than it should. Like they just uh, got, they just got like long eight inches of snow a couple of days ago. And she was like, enough. <laughs> like I love we winter, were, but we're done here. <laughs> we were literally there in April one year. We were there in April of 2019. Yes. And had a blizzard. Well, that was in North Dakota. That's what I'm saying. Like, like North, like the, that. So that year I went to that same part of the country three times. Twice mm-hmm. during a polar vortex and one time when we went to North Dakota and got stuck there. But I'm saying winter's in its lane in April in Minnesota. It's in its lane in May in Minnesota. In northern Minnesota, not in not in the <laughs> Twin Cities. Not in the Twin Cities. I'll take your word. I'll take your word. I, it, I feel like April, sure April just feels like one cities. of those moments where it's like, well, I mean, it can get cold, I feel like, but like eight inches of snow is kind of like, man, screw you. Spring. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. So Sorry. it's uh, no, no, no. I get you. I get you. It's uh, but it, but it's but it's th- there. It's open year round. Uh, and um, yeah. If you if you're not if you're not keen on you know camping out in snow or just camping out in general, uh, when you're in the area, International Falls is a good jumping off point Ooh, for. I've heard International Falls is. I've heard it's nice. I've heard it's insanely very nice. cool. Like I've heard really great things about. I've never been. No, me either. It's not too far from Duluth either. Two and a half hours. Like International Falls is probably another half hour. I liked Duluth. Forty five minutes. I actually liked Duluth. I've heard good there. things. I've heard good things. Yeah. It was it was neat. There's something enjoyed, about yeah. being right on the lake like it's right at the base of Lake Superior. Mm-hmm. And there's and because because the Great Lakes are so massive, you feel like you're on an ocean. You don't yeah. you don't recognize that it's fresh water. But then it's not salty. Yeah, but it's, but it's massive. I mean, it's one of those, like, there's something about being next to a huge body of water that I know, like, you either love it or you hate it, truthfully. I mean, mm-hmm. most people, most people look at it and they feel just one immediate kind of way about it. For me, I'm one of those people where I love it and I see it and I'm just like, the vastness of it just calls to me and it, and it feels so, it feels so beautiful and engaging and enchanting all at the same time. There's something about it, the history of it. And you think about like the transportation, mm-hmm. the steamboats, the, you know, the history. Steamboat Willie. Uh, <laughs> really? I'm always going to punch it up. You I, are so I'm, that guy. I'm here with the jokes. You are so I'm, that guy. I'm, I'm going to take your beer away from you. Wait, actually, can I try a sip of that? Can I've I try never... a sip of your tequila? <clears throat> You've had my tequila. I've never had the Sylvie Stout before. You have. I've not. All right. While she's doing on that, let's talk about some of the other parks that they mentioned in this in well, that's this tart. article. Whoa. Woo. Rich, dark, and smooth, it says. It's like I would agree. It's not a coffee stout? I don't think so. God, it tastes like a coffee stout. Anywho. Sorry. <laughs> back to <laughs> back to the news. Great Basin National Park in Nevada. Mm. Which also sounds that sound this sounds stupid cool to me. And okay. it's it's uh it's along the loneliest road in America as labeled by National Geographic. It is this crazy piece of highway called US fifty and it runs like the entire width of Nevada Nevada. Okay. In the northern half though, out to like the Reno Carson City. Is Reno and Carson City in the same area? Oh, in any way. Anywho. Yeah. So it runs this the length of, or the width of the state in the Great Basin. Yeah. And um, it, it just really looks like a, a the, the park itself is fascinating because they have caves. They have, um, you I know, like a good cave. huge tall peaks there. You know, it, it's in the middle of the high desert, which we're going to get into one of these days and um, <laughs> our news stories are going a little long. Time. It's just a tad. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, it, but it's really like, it's just, it's such a barren part of the country yeah. and it's just that, that, that frontier feeling never really left. Mm. And it just, it, but it just looks like an amazing park to, to check out. And um, yeah, it's also open year round, a uh, wide variety of, of terrain from, you know, the caves that I was talking about, Lehman Caves to Wheeler Peak, which is the tallest, tallest mountain there. Um, six camp, six campgrounds to camp in, if you would Ooh, like. You can also nice. hole up in <clears throat> Baker, Nevada. Okay. 
Uh, beyond that, we have Cape Lookout National Seashore, which, again, is right there. It's on the Outer Banks nice. in North Carolina. Um, but you have to reach that by ferry or boat as well. Huh. And it doesn't have any paved roads. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you can, can you go... bike around it? I don't think so. Huh. I think it's one of those places where it's like you can ATV. You can oh. get, you know, so yeah, if you have that to bring on up on I'm board. noticing a trend with some of these parks. Dude, they are crazy remote and very Is that maybe like, why they're unimproved. not as crowded? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Like like legit, some of these are so tough to get to. I mean, Great Basin is is like three and a half hours from Salt Lake City. So it's like you can tell it's doable. But I feel like I feel like I know you've got another one on here and I want to hear about this one too, but I but I also want to say like there are other parks not on here that like even you and I have been to that like we just talked about Great Smoky Mountains. I mean like Great Smoky Mountains doesn't get like super crowded. They do though. Really? That's the that's what's interesting about this because I was thinking the same exact thing and it's like it stop. It's uh it, it, like Great Smoky Mountains National Park is one of those parks where it's like it fills up. And I'm here to tell you I've actually been at times when it's like just wall to wall wild cars and everything. And we're talking April. We're not talking Dude. summer. Well, even. but I mean, that is, that is, that is a great time to go and it is spring vacation or but spring break. So that does kind of like, make sense, but yeah, it, but it's that much worse in summertime. Huh? Like great smoky mountains fills up Delaware water gap, national recreational area fills up. Mm. These places fill up. The ones that I'm talking about on this list don't. And it's precisely because of what you're saying. It's like, mm -hmm. it's a nice alternative, but you have but to it make requires you, some it strategy. Takes some effort to get, Got it. to get there yeah. and do these things. And, you know, same with like Lassen Volcanic uh, National Park in, uh, in California. Which I love me a good volcano. Yeah, it looks really cool too. Active it's, or not, uh, don't it's, care. It's not, too, <laughs> it's not too far from Redding. So that kind of tells you how far north in California. Oh yeah. Is. So okay. it's up in, yeah, it's up in the Sierra. But you're in like wine country. -ish. No, no, you're not. I thought Redding no, was. No, you are not. Redding, do, 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 do. Redding <laughs> might be, I, I'm not that familiar, but like the wine country tends to be much closer to the coast. Redding is oh uh, more inland. Redding is far more inland. Gotcha. It's like it's it's up into the foothills above the Central Valley. If oh, I'm not, yeah, if I'm no, not that's mistaken. way off. Never mind. So yeah, forget I said anything. <laughs> so, but that's but that's you know. So you got lots of really cool suggestions here, and it is something to keep in mind when you're talking about God, California the national park system. It really is. This whole country is so beautiful. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like you can get off the grid, you can get off, get out to these national parks. It's just going to take you a little bit more effort. And I'm kind of like, on the one hand, it's like, yes, let's let's promote some of these national parks. Let's maybe bring a few people out of the other national parks so we can all enjoy the beauty, huh, kids? <laughs> uh, share for the rest of the class. But uh, at the same time, it's like these are not easy to get to. And I'm, I was I was looking at some of them myself, and I'm you know decent means and, and all that fun stuff and i'm like i have no idea how I go. <laughs> like i can i can just i can hear my accountant getting mad at me for even thinking about going to glacier bay national park uh, like uh, what what are we what are we even talking here to fly to philly to juno to yeah. run a or get another flight from on alaska air to gustavus <laughs> go up to glacier bay it. It. like it would be amazing i'm sure but whew. i like that story that's actually fascinating and especially right? because it leads very well into <gasps> very well into talking about the four corners as it were, as it were. so a little history on this for us. So the reason why the Four Corners is um, a big deal to us is because this was this was one of those trips that we really got the chance to spend a lot of time uh, planning, mm -hmm. anticipating, putting together in the way that like when you want to plan like that, that you that you can. And it, and it was one of the few moments where I didn't just have like the one thing I wanted to do. I had a, I had a couple of yeah. things I you wanted to check out. You gave me a couple out. suggestions here yeah. too, which was kind of rare. I'm not going <laughs> to lie when it comes to our trial. I mean, <laughs> you're talking to the woman whose only objective in going to Ireland was to see the Jameson's distillery in Middleton. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. Um, but no, the, uh, the four corners are one of those places where um, you, there is so much to do you literally cannot miss out 
That's one thing I love yeah. about it. I have no reservations recommending this part of the country to anyone and saying, get down there. You will find something. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. It, and real quick, so that we're all on the same page, the Four Corners region, and we've mentioned, I think we mentioned this before, <laughs> but just so that we're, you know, all on the same page here. Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona all converge in one, this one little spot. One tiny little spot. And it's the only spot in the United States where there are four states that share a border, that share like this little corner together. Oh, there, there is a fun little caveat to that. There is. Would you like to explain it? Uh, n- I'm not in depth, but I can, I, I can tell you this much. I know for a fact that this is actually partially by judicial decree because of the fact that there were minor survey errors that rendered the border ever so slightly, the border between Colorado and Utah Mm -hmm. ever so slightly off. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a part where they see a little jog. Yeah. If you look at a map and you zoom in, you'll see where it kind of juts out a little bit and then it juts back in. Really care about that shit. So, you know, (laughs) but, uh, but, but we'd call it the four corners because we went to all four States while we were there. Now we only went to Utah while we were at the actual four corners monument. So we didn't really, I'm still counting it. We, I mean, I actually used to work with a dude who, a client who, uh, who's, who's from Salt Lake city. I was like, I went to the, I went to four corners. I stepped in Utah. I'm counting. And he says, it's fair. I mean, it, and you know why it's fair is because the Four Corners Monument is not easy to get to. <laughs> like you really have to not. intend to go there. Yeah, for sure. So it is. And, and for me, I was like, I don't care if people count it or not. It sh- you count it because Lord have mercy. If you made it that far, you meant to get there. That was intentional. And that's how it's counted. It's not like, oh, well, I had a stop. I had a, I had a stop off in, you know, like I used to say, oh, I've been to Japan because I had been through Narita one time. Like, right. no, like that's you didn't, not, you, you didn't, I didn't have a layover in, in Utah. Yeah, you didn't switch <laughs> planes in, in Salt Lake city and then go on to your next destination. Correct. It's, this Correct. is one of those deals where it's like <laughs> you drove out to the four corners and yes. to, to Adelaide's point, like the closest any, like the closest large, Anything. large town to the Four Corners is um, uh, Cortez, Colorado, Colorado which is, which is about an hour. It's a cute little town. It's, it's got it's a got great like Taco Bell. It's people. <laughs> That's it. Like, and they are, let me tell you, that, that, like the little amount of time that we stayed there was kind of the highlight, one of the highlights of the trip. Like okay. we, we, well, I don't know if you remember, but we went to, we went to Taco Bell because I insist, like I, I am a Taco Bell freaking fanatic. I love their Mexican pizzas. When they got rid of them for that hot minute, I was destroyed emotionally, but I got, <laughs> I got better after she was I came too. back. I, I was, can, I was can not totally okay. Confirm that. Uh, it was, it was, it nasty. was so bad. My siblings knew about it and didn't tell me. <laughs> When I found out, I was like, did you, did you look at this? And they were like, yeah, we knew. I was like, <gasps> anyway, uh, not the point, post. not the point, but we went to Cortez. Uh, we stopped off. We got Taco Bell and we were sitting there eating. And these two um, gentlemen sat down near us uh, in like this long booth and they were chatting. And it turned out one of them was a local farmer and one of them was an auctioneer in town. And we just had the cutest conversation with those two men. They were, they were lovely Every person, every person there just seemed like happy, I think is the word I'm looking for. I don't know if that's like, I, I mean, I'm sorry if you're, if you're from Cortez and you're just sort of like, eh, that's, that's fine. But it just like the people we encountered just seemed to really like it. And it's a great, it's a beautiful little space, but anyway, yeah, so I'll so talk about it. But that was like, yeah, I, but, so, so yeah, the, the, like those are the four states that make up the four corners, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. We were bound and determined to at least see some tiny little corner, some postage stamp little corner of each. And, and we got um, more yeah, than but that. It's, it was a, but it was like to Adelaide's point. We'd both been there when we were younger mm-hmm. and just found it amazing. It's, um, it, it's, and it, what's wild is for me, like the whole thing about the desert Southwest in general, just the, the, those four States is how, how diverse the landscape really is. And of course, how extremely different it is to, um, to all of, of, the rest of the United States, oh, yeah. basically, and you know, I'm like, I'm like, few people have encountered this, and I'm like, have few people encountered this sort of landscape? And then I'm like, yes, few people have because not that many people live there. It's not nearly as densely populated as you know the United States or the, the United States. It's in the United States. 
kids, kids. Oh, look at me, geography nerd. Uh. Anyhow, um, yeah, but it's but it's like not like the East Coast where you have fifty million people packed right. in between Richmond and in in Boston. It's, Nor is it like the East Coast where you can drive a couple like an hour and a half and be. In, oh, you I don't know you'd New York pack City. like thirteen states into you. You would pack the thirteen colonies into the area easily comprised by these four states, and it's it, but it, but that's what's really that's one of the things that's really cool about it is like you've got low desert, which is the you know Roadrunner and and wily coyote thing that you're used to and everything which some of those some of those um those background scenes and everything are based on uh the parks out in that neck mm-hmm. of the woods um but then you get to the high desert like flagstaff and uh and pieces of the northwest corner of new mexico where mm-hmm. it's you know it's hot in the summertime and it's very very dry but then winter rolls around and like Flagstaff gets a hundred inches of snow and has coniferous forests everywhere. And of mm-hmm. course it's not far from like the Grand Canyon is in kind of that area. Uh, other national, like a boatload of national parks surround the four corners, mm-hmm. none of which is terribly close to the four corners unless <laughs> you're talking Mesa Verde, which is about an hour, hour and a half, which from the four corners monument. But um, which is incredible highly, in and of it. But that's recommend. Yeah, it's just there's the, it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous area to to go and look at. And you might be thinking, oh, it's a bunch of friggin' desert and sand. You you're don't not know wrong. Half of it. You're not. But you, it's not. But you're that's not wrong. Also but you're really missing beautiful. the big picture. <laughs> it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. So out if, there. if if I may, like one of the so we t- we. We posted the question here, why did we pick the four corners? And and we had some great responses here for ourselves. Like, it's really easy to get off the grid, which is awesome. Um, it's f***ing gorgeous. Like, oh my mm, yeah. goodness. Yeah, just night. unreal. Unreal beauty. There are tons of great parks, which you just alluded to uh, And it's just it's well. state parks. It's even local parks are very cool. But yeah, just all kinds of parkland out there. But my big thing, to your point about the landscape, is... It's, it's unlike any place you've ever been. There's, there's a lot to be, I mean, let me, let me phrase this carefully because I don't know where everyone has been. And I know there's a lot of (laughs) majesty in the world along with all the dangers that Jim seems to think exists. But anyway, um, the idea of getting someplace that's, that's, uh, as remote as this and seeing something that makes you feel like you're on another planet. If anyone's familiar with Meow Wolf, um, mm. so Meow Wolf was, uh, started as a coalition of artists who got together and with the help of an investor you may or may not have heard of, uh, by the name of George R. R. Martin, or as I um, like to call him, George R. 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 Martin, Martin. <laughs> um, they purchased a 20,000 square foot bowling alley in Santa Fe and converted it into a, uh, experience. Yeah. There's really no other an way to art describe experience. it. It is, it's called the, uh, House of, House eternal, of eternal Return. Re- Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> just stepping right all over you. Just stomp, 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 stomp. Just, stomp. just go back to your beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need another one now. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, but the House of Eternal Return is a literal two-story house that has been built inside this bowling alley. Yeah. And you walk in, you see the house first, and then... Y- and then you walk in and everything's an experience. Like literally it's a touch everything, look at everything. Like they have so many, it's so detailed down to like every book has been created by an artist. They're not books that you would find on like a normal shelf, but mm-hmm. you like, and then you open the book and it's like someone's diary. Like someone went and wrote a diary, tens or hundreds of pages worth mm-hmm. and like put this stuff in there. Um, there's a storyline that you can follow when you go through it, but it is a, tr- if you want to, but there's a truly yeah. otherworldly element to it intentionally. So, um, just as a quick example, mm-hmm. um, Jim and I were walking through one room. We were walking through the laundry room <laughs> of the house. This is your I, favorite. I love this I'm story sure. because I, because he walked right past it. So he walks past the dryer and the washing machine and I'm like, Ooh, and I go, Jim, check this out. I had no idea what was going to happen. I really didn't. But I like, I walked over to the dryer. I opened the door and I just dove head first into the dryer. And it took me into another room. <laughs> like a total, it was like a portal that took me into this like it totally was so other. Cool. It, was it was so, really, I just really like cool. disappeared into the dryer. <laughs> but this kind of thing exists there because 
I think, because people are inspired by their environment. And and that is the type of environment that you live in when you're in the desert Southwest. It's so otherworldly. You feel like you're on another planet when you're there. I Yeah, it, it, especially if you're from, well, anywhere that's not really the that that part of the world but I'd be, I'd be interested to learn about what people from like saharan era areas or uh, uh i was thinking like um um oh no uh, uh that uh that salt lake in bolivia oh yeah yeah that'd be interesting i can't think of the like name they're... or like tunisia or something right like there's um like these beautiful desert landscapes and stuff and like is it tunisia or tanzania or tanzania yeah tunisia does as well like this to your point about the saharan space yeah. but it, but like those those um where the desert meets the ocean you know like zanzibar and stuff like that See, in I, tanzania i, I was like also just... thinking like the the stands the the <sighs> I, I can imagine it, eurasia i can imagine yeah like like central yeah central the central eurasian yes. land mass like Which, but the, the thing is we it, will have someone on to talk about oh that yeah i cannot wait for this but, couple of weeks. but it's one of those things where it's like i'm always i'm always hesitant because like obviously these places exist and they're they are more numerous than i think a lot of people really think they are and on the other hand it's like all of them are fairly sparsely populated. Mm. So of course, you know, your, your major population centers and everything are closer to coasts and waterways and, and more accessible places. And so I'm like, I, I, I'm like, do we talk about it in terms of like, Oh my gosh, it's so alien and everything. Or is it, you know, is it one of those things where it's just like, we're not used to it. And it's like, yes, it's, it's a little bit of both. No, it's alien. <laughs> it's just straight up otherworldly alien shit this is like other dimensional no screw your waterways screw your populace screw your you oh know we're just the, not used like, to it yeah. people who live there are like oh no we're awed by the majesty all the time <laughs> i would actually like to i would like to hear more from somebody but like but i would, I would be willing to bet like people from phoenix and people from denver and, and everything i'm bet i'm betting you and please if you're from phoenix if you're from denver podcast at trippy.com tell us where phoenix we're or from denver you're especially but awed by the majesty of the high desert because you're in the city i was gonna say like they probably don't get out that often to these these remote areas either so it is still alien for people in well the major cities in but any anyhow. regard we went there in september of 2019 we mm -hmm. spent two weeks mm um total driving around driving everywhere driving. we drove uh oh. 1600 miles in total yeah which is almost the width of the united states it's like a little over no the united states is like 2500 miles well i'm looking this uh, up now 22 anyway depending on which to which but yeah so it's a lot um but yeah we spent two weeks we spent time um everywhere I mean, I mean, truthfully, we went to we we went to parks. We stayed on uh, we stayed on Zuni Pueblo. We stayed in um, Mesa Verde. We stayed at the Grand Canyon. Um, we stayed in Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. Went through Sedona. Checked out Santa Fe. Stayed there for a couple of nights. Uh, did a brief pit stop in Albuquerque, which is where Jim picked up this hat. I also oh, just yes. realized which T-shirt you're wearing, which I love, uh, which was the soundtrack for our trip, which is so perfection. Uh, we did we did listen to a lot of Lord Huron out we there. We did yeah. a lot of Lord Huron and a lot of Beck, both of lot which of were Beck. very fitting oh, for yeah, that. For sure, for sure. <laughs> yes, if but, you haven't listened to either of those, definitely check out Lord Huron, please, it, and thank you. And by the way, it's it's about three thousand miles across the. Oh, country. you know what? Just fine. Halfway, we drove halfway across <laughs> the United States. Still impressive. Still impressive. Still not nothing. Um. So yeah. So in the coming. Uh, I'm not going to commit to anything because we've weeks. got we've got our hackathon coming up next week. But in the com in the coming few weeks, we're going to be putting out some videos around our experience yeah. and how we planned for it, uh, what we decided to do while we were there. Uh, one of the things that I, <clears throat> as myself, am very proud of is the fact that, and I am proud of this, the fact that uh, I I have a history in the Southwest. My grandparents, my grandfather grew up in. Uh, mm -hmm. He actually grew up on the stretch of dirt road that later became the interstate that connects El Paso and Las Cruces, New Mexico. Which uh, I believe is I-25, which runs up through 
Colorado Springs and oh, Denver. Colorado Springs is great. Denver's great too. Oh, that whole area. Holy crap. Yeah. Why do we live in Philly again? I love Philly. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, but no, the uh but my grandfather grew up there. My grandmother, uh, my nana grew up uh in California. Uh, but then they both moved to Tucson, lived there for a while, and then they lived in Las Cruces for a long time. And uh, I used to go visit them there with all kinds of regularity. So this mm-hmm. is actually so um, we have a we have a dear friend here in Philadelphia uh, who makes jewelry, and he did this for me. This was uh, one of my Gramps's. Um, this was a money clip that he had had made while he was living in. The desert Southwest. I can't remember where exactly he was, but uh, I inherited a bunch of his jewelry when he passed yeah. away. So he had all these beautiful like bolos uh, and and tie pins and all this great stuff. And so I took all of these things to Ira and I said, you know, could you maybe make them into things that I could wear? So he did. So I've got this. Um, I've got these lovely earrings that you bought me. I really love like inlays and stuff like mm. that. Uh, I bought this for myself in um, Zuni Pueblo. The point, the reason I'm pointing all this stuff out is because um, there's just a lot to experience there's a, lot to buy. <laughs> there's a lot to buy there's a lot to buy there no, go I, shopping go crazy buy the artisanal stuff because let me tell you like people make some beautiful things down there and there's just but i'm a rock hound you are that's the whole thing is like the the reason i'm talking about the landscapes the reason i'm talking about the jewelry all that i'm a freaking rock hound i wanted to be a mm-hmm. geologist when i was a kid and then i found out i probably have to work for an oil company and then i decided i didn't want that anymore but i love rocks i'm not ashamed to admit it I travel with vibrators and I love rocks. That's who I am. <laughs> so take it or leave it. Uh, well, I took it. Good. <laughs> I'm here for it. Why is my, oh, this one's all like messed up. But yeah, so anyway, um, I wonder how long it's been that way. People have probably been like, you're complaining about his stupid cable and your earring is messed up, woman. Fix your shit. Get it together. Anyway, so uh, yeah, this was um, the whole reason I brought this together. It all comes full circle. All I wanted to go to, to the Southwest because of the rocks. I'm not even kidding. So, And my major objective was um, see as much of it as I possibly could, but go back to the Grand Canyon where I'd oh. been uh, right around the turn of the century. Yeah, I'm saying it. It's a thing. I know. I know. Sorry, folks. That's real, though. Um I had been there. My my father actually lived in F- Sedona for a hot minute. Home to my favorite McDonald's. Shop name. Oh no, the Sedona. <laughs> Sedona. I don't even remember <laughs> Sedona. Well, I didn't even get to eat any because they weren't open. Oh, that's right. I was but, so miffed. Sedona. But yeah, so he lived there and uh, actually offered me a you know like said we can either go to Vegas or to the grand Canyon. And I was like, bollocks to Vegas. Let's, let's see the grand Canyon. And it was so nice. that I, I mean, actually, how old were you? I was 26, 27. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were like a kid. I was oh, like, no, no, why no, would no. you I was already, I was already child. drinking and doing drugs at that and then... point. And uh, it's, it, it, yeah. And I was already doing all the fun things that adults so get to do. Vegas. And, well, I suppose, <laughs> but no, I was just like, I was like, ah, you know, I, here's, here's my philosophy. This is going to, this is going to show, tell you a lot about why I like to go here as well as why I do the things that I do. Um, I am one of those people who is like, if I go to, if I go to a casino and gamble a hundred dollars away, I'm going to be like, I lost a hundred dollars. And if I go to a bar and hang out with some of my friends and watch some game and spend a hundred bucks on alcohol, I'm like, man, I had a greatest time of ever. (laughs) That's just how I operate. It's just how I operate. I make no excuses, no apologies. I I love it. Everyone's Uh, experience oriented and everyone's experiences are different. That's exactly how I feel. I'm like, I do not want to spend my money gambling. I want to spend it either seeing nature or, or, you know, doing some other experience like that. Yep. And, um, and, and yeah, so I was like, show me the grand Canyon. And at one point got, you know, got back there in winter time. And I was like, you know, do we, he's like Vegas. And I'm like, no grand Canyon again in winter in snow. 
like no lie. I cannot wait to get back Amazing. there. Amazing. Incredible. There's so many things. There's so many things to see again. But, There's so many things to, and the yeah, North Canyon, it, we haven't even, the North no, Rim. No, North Rim. Rim uh, but like, then you were like, oh, there's petrified forest and everything. And we looked that up and that was really, really awesome. And, and uh, Santa Fe and there's just so many things to see. And it's yeah. so very different from, from the East Coast. Yeah. And just that beautiful desert landscape, just incredible. So yeah, can't wait to talk. <laughs> I know, right? It's <laughs> we're all over the. I'm just swerving all, driving and swerving all, all down the road here. You? It's treating me beautifully. Um, <laughs> no, so uh, so yeah, I can't wait to get into some more of the details yeah. and everything around how we planned it yep. uh, in upcoming episodes. Um, yeah, I think we're getting ready to wrap this here. I up, think though, so. I think we've hit that point. So yeah, definitely. So. And uh, no, it's um, looking forward to bringing you. The remainder of what the four corners looked like is from a planning standpoint and from a places we went standpoint and all that fun stuff. And also looking forward to our hackathon next week where you yes. y'all are going to get to meet some of our uh some more of our teammates oh my gosh i cannot wait this is gonna, gonna be the podcast. first time our whole team will be together we, oh yeah some of us have never met face to face before i know we're gonna get <sighs> most of us have never met face to face i know I know most no I guess 50, anyway 50. anyway so yeah so you'll next time you see us we'll be at our CTO's cabin uh meeting together putting together some stuff for our forthcoming application mm -hmm. y'all get excited it's it's getting ready folks if you thought we we're... were knowledgeable here wait till <laughs> wait till the mobile app comes out if you thought we bloviated here no, no stop the, the no, mobile app the mobile boo. app is I cannot boo. wait where's your womp womp what is this nope that wasn't it <laughs> And that, if you're <laughs> and this is why I'm not allowed to touch the buttons. That's right. Wait, how do I? I are did you it. Just, are you just? I didn't mean just to do drop that. Drop right directly whoops. into it, huh? I didn't mean to, but it worked. <laughs> I think we probably we should probably call it. This is we're at about the 90 minute point anyway. So. Oh yeah, we're definitely good. Hey folks, you know, thanks again for joining us. Uh, this is obviously our fifth episode. We've had a lovely time presenting this all to you. Uh, we may not have, we may not do this on a Saturday night again. I think that was, <laughs> that might've been a scheduling error on our part, but you know, whatever. It's all good. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, this podcast, help this SoundCloud, us, wherever you're getting this. Help us hit a thousand subscribers have, this month. Let's do this. I have this. been challenged. Um, there will be toys used on me if we don't get to Stop. a thousand. Oh my God. This is the worst. You're done. I'm Bring it back nope, around. Nope. Your mic, your mic, your mic's off. <laughs> Anyhow. I'm not going to beat my husband no, if we don't hit a thousand subscribers. But, but you can support us by doing that. You can also support our work by going to patreon.com slash trippy. Uh, don't forget to keep it tuned to our YouTube page because we're going to be rolling out some fun new content on the Southwest the Road Trip. Coming up. Web, website's coming up. If you're um, having problems with our existing website, don't worry. It's, yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, it's, it'll it's, be, a, it'll it's be a work in progress. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we it's, um, speaking of that, uh, I'm going to leave you with uh, another inspiring quote. Um, this one from Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. Until next time, folks. Go have an adventure.